And, you know, I've been hearing from some of my constituents about frustrations re revolving around ancillary fees um, that they might be encountering while they're traveling, whether it's baggage fees, the refund process, fees for families sitting together. Uh, and I know the U.S. Department of Transportation has implemented the Air Airline Customer Service Dashboard um, to help give cus consumers a, a quick glance view of the progress that's being made um, by airlines with uh, uh, only three domestic carriers guaranteeing adjacent seats for children under 13 and uh, an accompanying adult at no additional cost. Uh, I think it would be helpful to understand the inflationary pressures, whether it's rising costs of fuel, uh, how the, that sort of thing impacts businesses um, in ways that maybe a lot of folks don't understand. but. I do think that you know we can't just expect all of the costs to be passed along to uh, uh, passed along uh, in the form of fees. And so I'm, I'm curious, uh, Ms. Pinkerton, if you could uh, just give a, the committee a bit of a level set on the ancillary fees, on um, maybe what your member airlines are doing to simplify the fee structure or to make it easier for consumers to understand, um, and then and then maybe what the work with DOT is looking like to. Uh, to ensure that the consumers understand the fees and uh, have a, as enjoyable experience as possible. I'm happy to because um, it's in our interest to have our passengers have a good experience because uh, we want repeat customers. Um, and with respect to, I'll take a couple of, of the themes that you mentioned. Um, with respect to family seating though, um, and by the way, I applaud the department's dashboard because we're all for transparency. Um, it's great. The problem, though, is in particular on the uh, family sitting together, they have a very prescriptive approach. For example, they chose the age 14. Well, there are carriers who are doing everything they want, but they chose age 13 or 12. Um, and I think the problem with a kind of a one-size-fits-all with respect to some of these issues is that it commoditizes air travel in a way that actually hurts competition. And I can assure you that having robust competition is the, the, the best way to ensure that customers get the best product at the best price. And, and frankly, again, to go take it back to family seating, um, you know, you mentioned a family seating fee. None of our carriers charge a, a, a family seating fee. That, that was a great talking point. Um, I, I understand um, that, but our carriers have great policies. They are on the DOT's website, they're on their website. We have a website, um, so we're very transparent about them. Um, and But I'm afraid that the having this fee, which some carriers did have, not, not A4A carriers, is being conflated with basic economy, which is simply, again, it's part of competition. You've got ultra low cost carriers, you've got low cost carriers, and then you've got some network carriers. And you know, you've got Southwest that doesn't charge um, bag or seating fees. Um, you've got the network carriers that if you're part of their loyalty program, you don't charge, you don't pay a fee. That is the beauty and diversity of our system is that there are choices. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, I'll look forward to continuing the conversation as we go through the reauthorization Absolutely. process.